right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whenever you're watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to episode 107 of the Restricted Zone podcast here on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Jonah Wooten. And as a reminder, make sure to check out episodes 105 and 106. In 105, me, Chris, and Greg, we break down WWE Backlash and the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament that's going on currently. In episode 106, it was a therapy session for our for the resident Sixers fans here in the Restricted Zone podcast. Sixers yet again failing to get it out of the second round, and we just had a lot to get off our chest. But you know that's 105, 106. Make sure to check those out. But tonight, episode 107 is a very very special episode because it's our very first one on one sit down interview in RZP history. Joining me tonight, a very special guest, former Clarion Golden Eagles linebacker. And the founder and owner of Plus One Limited Sports Performance, Mr. Samuel the Hitman Payne. Sam, welcome to the wow. Restricted Zone, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> it's an honor to be on, Jonah. Um, that's one heck of an intro. I Thank couldn't you. have done one better myself, man. Um, like I said earlier, it's you know it's a pleasure to be on. And you know, just to give you guys a little background about myself, like Jonah mentioned, um, I am a for- former. Um, Clarion University Golden Eagle linebacker. Uh, I didn't graduate from Clarion, though, um, for numerous reasons that we'll dive into, obviously, um, as Jonah starts to give me different questions to answer. Um, I am a Temple University alum. Right now, currently, I am in the graduate program with the Golden Rams, which is Westchester University, and I'm studying exercise sports science with a concentration in applied performance. You know, just trying to do my due diligence and making sure that I'm being able to cultivate the best programs um, which are effective and backed by science for athletes and individuals of all race, colors, and sizes. Love to hear it. Love to see it. As you mentioned, you are a former Clarion Golden Eagle. Let's talk about a little bit about that. Um, let's start in your college career. You, you know, you played in Clarion. It's, for those who don't know, it's a you know, fairly small town in uh, western Pennsylvania, population of about you know, 4,000 people about a five hour car ride from Philadelphia. Just tell me what was, you know, that game day environment like on Saturdays? Oh man, um, you know, as you mentioned, it's a very small community, but despite it being a very small community, it's things like football, it's things like athletics that brings the community together. So they were very supportive. Uh, being a Clarion, it was definitely a life-changing experience for me. I had the opportunity to meet a lot of different coaches. Outside of coaches, there's a lot of different professors there that were able to mold me into a different man. Um, as far as, like, the game day environment, um, of course, it's not going to be, like, you know, a Division One school or a Division One AA or, like, a bigger, you know, Division Two school, but it was definitely electric, um, from at least what I could recall. Um, I remember coming out especially on game days, specifically our homecoming, walking down the main street. I'm talking about bands playing music, us singing the alma mater, and, you know, just feeling like we were the life of the the environment and all eyes were on us and people were relying on us to bring home and ring that bell. So it 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 was a great time there. And the sport, it was it was immense. So, yeah. Do you feel like, you know, with it being a small town, you know, unlike Philadelphia, where you have, you know, four major, you know, professional sports teams playing there, you think they kind of appreciated you guys just a little bit more and, you know, showed out, showed up and showed out for you guys? Yes, I do feel as if, like, you know, it being a small town, um, definitely because of athletics, it brought in a lot of um, just money as far as, individuals from the outside communities, other neighboring towns coming in just to see athletes play um, as a pastime. So as far as in comparison to Philadelphia, where you have, you know, numerous sport teams, as far as from the um, collegiate level to the professional level, where individuals have the option to go to on any given Sunday or any given Saturday or yet any given Thursday night or Friday, um, Clarion being in that community, it was like, when the football game was going on, that was literally like probably the only thing going on that day. So the community came right. out and they showed out. Yeah, absolutely. And Clarion is a part of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. 
founded in 1951, is about 18 schools in the conference, all Pennsylvania teams, including Clarion and, you know, Westchester, where you currently attend school, Mercyhurst, Bloomsburg, IUP. Just how competitive, you know, were those conference games, considering that everyone is just a bus ride away? Oh, man. Um, from my recollection, I believe the PSAC um, is probably one of the most competitive D2 divisions across the nation. Um, I faced numerous different athletes. Um, I can't name them all, Ped, but are probably in the NFL right now. If not in the NFL, playing somewhere overseas or playing arena football or playing in the XFL. Um, to my recollection, there was one individual that I remember that was breaking records during my time at Clarion University, which his name was Mark Jones. He was a running back at the time um, for Gannon University. And I'm talking about this guy. He was pretty much he was pretty much a Division One football player playing in collegiate um, playing in Division Two um, football. And I myself uh, and this is not to like you know hype myself up or anything like that. I felt no, like I was a great. Hype I felt like I was like a great, I was great, I was a great um, athlete, you know, not just, you know, linebacker, but great athlete, and I was blessed to have the opportunity to play on a Division II level, because coming out of high school, you don't see a lot of individuals have the opportunity to even go to the next level, so just to be able to play at the next level goes to speak for itself, uh, as far as just how competitive it is, those are individuals that devote their time, their efforts, and make sacrifices to get there, and they take their craft very seriously, So just like, you know, any career path or, you know, any venture that you put your time into, if you, you know, have a community of individuals who are dedicated to what they're doing, there's going to be some form of competition within that area. So that goes to show that, you know, Division Two, yeah, it sounds like, you know, like a step down from Division One AA or Division One, but it's very much very competitive from my, you know, from my perspective. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, those schools and those conferences still get a lot of scouts. I mean, people, NFL scouts, they're looking for talent at every position, like every level, even all the way down to JUCO, they're looking for, you know, talent. So, you know, don't sleep on those schools. Don't sleep on those conferences. You know, they, they still care. They're still very, very competitive. And, you know, at playing in those very competitive environments can sharpen, you know, sharpen the iron and, Speaking of very competitive environments, let's take it a step back. Let's go back to the high school days. You are, along with many other members of the Restricted Zone podcast, a former, you know, you're a former graduate of Roman Catholic High School in Center City, Philadelphia, and you played in the Philadelphia Catholic League. You know, Roman Catholic, Father Judge, LaSalle, St. Joe's Prep, Newman. I went to Northeast, you know, I was a public school kid, but, you know, I... I saw some Catholic um, league games and, you know, I'm somewhat familiar, but it's it's very, very competitive in the Catholic league. You guys take your sports very seriously, especially basketball. Um, Just how, you know, just comparing the Catholic league to the PSEC, how did the PCL prepare you for college? Uh, Man, you know, let me take a second, honestly. So the PCL, the Philadelphia Catholic League, I felt as if, like, you know, it definitely sharpened my skills. Um, and going into the PSAC, especially playing a clarion, I felt as if, like, I was overly prepared just from the level of um, competition that I experienced playing in the Philadelphia Catholic League as far as from a more skill set position. I don't want to talk about, like, the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman. Yeah, you go um, outside of the PSAC. You see individuals in the SEC and other variatives of different conferences within um, Division One sports. They're a whole lot bigger. But being in the P, um, the PCL, the Philadelphia Catholic League, uh, I noticed a lot of different players like John Reed, DeAndre Swift, that came out of that you know that league that are now in the NFL and are you know doing great things and formerly you know, having Will Fuller too. Yeah, formerly Will Fuller too. So having the opportunity to just play play against those guys, I feel as if play against those guys, but just not, you know, play against them, but practice against them, specifically Will Fuller. Like that just gave me the, you know, exposure to elite level athletes that I don't want to say wasn't on the division two level, but when I had the opportunity to face division um division two players who were of that caliber, I was prepared because I've been exposed to that. So 
the Philadelphia Catholic League um, definitely, you know, gave me exposure that I needed and equipped me with all the tools and prepared me as far as going against different skill players. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say um, the size aspect because I felt like a lot of the individuals and the Division Two level were kind of undersized, but I was, you know, all around, you know, just prepared for the um, for the PSAC going in there as a freshman. So, you know, it's very competitive Catholic league, plenty of great schools. Be honest, who is the toughest opponent to play in the Catholic league? <laughs> So I'm going to have to say, from when I was playing at Roman, I'm going to have to say St. Joe's Prep. But there was years, though, where LaSalle was definitely, you know, definitely top notch and were our arch nemesis. But at least for my four years, you know, throughout high school playing, specifically my three years playing as um, a starter and on the varsity team, I would say LaSalle Catholic definitely, I mean, LaSalle Catholic, but St. Joe's Prep definitely gave us a run for our money and definitely, you know, dominated us a lot in different, um, in different, you know, encounters. So I would have to say St. Joe's Prep was definitely, you know, the powerhouse of the P, um, PCL while I was in high school. All Just right. to be honest. <laughs> Just to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Look, you've, you've been playing football since the age of eight. You you spent some you know you spent some time playing tight end as well as outside linebacker, you know you've been on both sides of the ball. Um, in your college career, you've had 94 tackles, total tackles, 39 solo tackles, fumble recovery, and a touchdown. Yes, I I did a little I did a little homework on you. Um, just just tell me, and again, just be completely honest. What's your career highlight? And just what do you take you know what do you look back most? on your career? What do you take from the most in your playing career at any level? Oh, I'm, I'm flattered, Jonah. I'm flattered that, you know, you were able to pull those stats out and, you know, do your research prior to me hopping on. Um, it's been such a long time since I played football, but I'm going to be honest with you. It's not even, it's not even the numbers that I reflect back on the most. It's just the experience overall. The, the person that football and team sports made me into currently today as far as the characteristics um, that coaches instilled in me and, you know, definitely honed in and ironed in me as far as like life after sports that I was able to take away from the game and be able to carry on into different things that I'm doing right now. And as far as like perseverance, consistency, being a hard worker, you know, being a quick, being a quick thinker, being able to be very studious um, from you know, being able to watch film and, you know, carry that over into my studies right now as um, exercise scientist. It's things like that that I reflect on the most that I feel as if, you know, when I think back, I'm very appreciative of of playing football and playing team-based sports. And, and what do you take, you know, what, you know, piece of advice from a coach or a professor do you still carry with you to this day? Wow. Uh. Look, it could be a high school teacher, you know, family member. So there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, but it's definitely going to, you know, come down to, you know, consistency and perseverance. And, you know, a message that I just, you know, heard at all levels was, you know, the world wasn't building one day. It was building seven. So, you know, take your time, you know, focus on what you're doing and understand that, you know, throughout life, there's going to be hardships. But it's not about how hard, you know, you can hit, but it's about how hard you can take a hit, bounce back up, and keep going. Little Rocky quote there. I love it. (laughs) All right. So, you know, as you've mentioned, you are a current grad student at Westchester, um, former Temple graduate, go Owls. And you're also, along with that, you know, you're a certified gym trainer. All right. Like you You got your thing going right now, man. You're a performance coach. At A Game right. Fitness and Performance, and of course the owner of Plus One Limited Sports Performance. What is your day to day like? I'm just, you know, curious. Just, I know you're a very busy guy. Just, just break down your day to day. Um, so you know, just like most people, and if you guys don't do this, like you know, establish a morning routine. 
Um, I'm definitely a big advocate for that as far as like, you know, how it just um, illuminates and starts starting your day off right, sets the tone for the remainder of your day. Um, so just waking up in the morning, the first thing I do is I, you know, pay homage to the Lord. I'm a very religious guy. So I just tell the Lord, thank you for, you know, giving me another opportunity to be the best me that I could be. And then I follow that by, you know, some affirmations that I read in my phone um, just to reiterate who I am and realign me with my goals throughout life. Then I go into meditation. After meditation, I, you know, find myself as, you know, I'm just doing some, you know, some grooming, listening to podcasts from different um, coaches right now that are renowned in the exercise sports science um, industry and strength and conditioning industry just to stimulate thoughts in my brain. And then right now being an entrepreneur specifically, um, I'm not necessarily, you know, obliged to any, you know, company. I'm kind of like just freelancing as far as like scheduling. So I have a lot of books here. Um, some of the books I'm reading right now, just to get, you know, give you guys. Oh yeah, plug us, plug us. Just, to, you know, a taste of what I'm, you know, interested in. Oops, apologize. No, you're good. Give me just a sec. I got a couple right here. So right here I'm reading, you know, the Max Muscle Plan. Um, this is by Brad Schofield. And one of my, you know, favorites and actually a great referral for one of my, you know, colleagues, um, Seneca Williams, um, The Daily Stoic um, by Ryan Holiday. Just giving, you know, different Greek philosophies. And then just decode the successful um, investing streak secrets and becoming financial free, just getting a little bit of no financial literacy. So just things of that sort, man, like, you know, I'm big on reading, I'm big on, you know, being self-taught and, you know, just trying to always enlighten myself. So after I do stuff like that in the morning, what happens is I, you know, if I hadn't checked my schedule already and it's not already planned out, um, I hit the gym and after hitting the gym, I get ready to train my clients for the day. Normally anywhere between two, three clients a day, on a busy day, maybe five to anywhere to seven. But for the most part, I do a lot of commuting in my car. So I'm, being, I'm bouncing back and forth from A game fitness and performance, which I do subcontracting there for, um, you know, Aaron, um, Aaron Sistrunk. And, you know, I'm just blessed and honored to have a mentor like him. And then if I'm not there, I'm over at Swift Fit um, underneath Darren Swift, um, which is the father of DeAndre Swift. So I'm also blessed to have an opportunity and, you know, be mentored by an individual of his stature as well, too. And then I'm home. Um, after I'm home after I'm home for the night, um, you know, I live by myself, so I'm cooking. And for all the individuals out there <laughs> that are young males, uh, what I would say to you guys is adulting, adulting is hard. So, you know. Oh, tell me about it, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> try I'm still to, at home, bro. It's, it's, it's rough. Try to stay with your parents as long as possible. And that's not to, you know, keep you guys crippled or anything like that along those lines. But put your pride aside and, you know, be appreciative of the support system that you have. And because not everybody has that. So just be very appreciative of that. I'm not telling you to soak them dry or anything along those lines. But definitely appreciate them while you have them around. And that's not to say that I don't have my parents around. My parents, you know, are still around. And I still am very appreciative of, you know, where I fall short, where they can help me at. But what I'm getting at is like, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I'm in a predicament I'm in right now is just, you know, because of my pride and my ego, um, I wanted to get out the house early and be able to do my own thing and advocate for myself and, you know, just take on a little bit more responsibilities. At first, I would say I wasn't necessarily, you know, ready for it, but just like, you know, everything in life um, with time, um, you're able to, you're able to learn from your lessons and your mistakes that you encounter and, you know, just better as far as like strategically plan moving forward. Um, and then after that, honestly, I'm, you know, I'm calling a night early, probably like around like, you know, 10, 11, and he's getting ready for the next day. But what I like to do is, you know, is I like to plan out my next day before I go into it. So I take the time at night just to think about, you know, things that I can improve on as far as like, you know, um, just my mental intelligence, um, different things that I missed throughout the day. And I try not to beat myself up about things that I missed because it's like, you know, we're, you're just, you're, you're only one person. If I can have like 10 of me, I would have 10 of me. And I'm pretty sure everything that I set out to do in one day, I would get done if I, if I had 10 of me. So I just try not Absolutely. to be too hard on myself. 
I try to be, you know, very forgiving and lighthearted when it comes to things that I miss throughout the day. And I just try to, like, you know, prove on everything on a day to day basis. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you when you wake up in the morning and you look in that mirror, that's the person that you're competing with. It's not about, you know, who's next to you or who's to the right of you. It's about who's in front of you and making sure that you're just trying to be one percent better than you were the day before. Hey man, dropping gems of wisdom here on the Restricted Zone podcast. I love it. I was going to ask you, you know, about any advice you may have for me or anyone out there who may need it, but you jumped the gun on that. And now, hey man, thank you. Um, but you did mention uh, DeAndre Swift. I'm, I'm assuming you were born in Liberia, West Africa, but you know you're you know raised here in Philadelphia. I, I'm assuming you're an Eagles fan. I'm hoping. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and I want to. I don't want to say sadly. You know, I I am. Oh, no, that's okay. Eagles. I am fond of the Eagles. I am an Eagles supporter. I am, you know, a Philadelphia team supporter. So all teams from Philadelphia. Well, man, you can be support. honest. You can be honest. It's cool. But I I'm a Ravens fan. I'm a Ravens fan. I'm a diehard Ravens okay. fan. And you want to ask me why I'm a Ravens fan? Um, it comes down to um, when I was growing up, who I really you know idolized and you know tried to mimic my game after, which was Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Yes. Um, those are very renowned individuals, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I used to watch different videos of both of them, you know, which coincidentally happened to go to Miami, and you know, just different things that you know that they lived by on a day-to-day basis. One of the things being hard work, you know, overcomes or surpasses everything. So those are the reasons why I'm a Ravens fan, and you know, still to this day, I'm very fond of players that are on the Ravens, like Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dubs. We recently just got Odell Beckham. I'm excited for the season because we got some weapons around Lamar right now, as far as Zay Flowers. And, you know, there's talk about D-Hop, um, DeAndre Hopkins um, potentially coming over to the Ravens. But I'm excited to see, you know, what we do this season. Last season. Last season, Ooh. we didn't have a great one, but I'm excited. And hey, you guys <laughs> made the playoffs. And yeah, look, but, if, you know, if Lamar was in, you guys probably would have beat the Bengals, bro. Because you, you, it was right there. It was right there. I was going to ask you about the Eagles, but. And they catch Joe Burrow. He's legit, man. He's legit. Joe Burrow. Yeah. Legit. Joe Burrow. Joe Burr, as the kids call him. <laughs> All right, so I uh, know I'll I'll end with this. I was gonna ask you about the Eagles, but you are a Ravens fan. Give me a season prediction. Season prediction. Give me your give me your record prediction. So I predict that the Ravens go. Um, so let me, let me let me make sure let me make sure I got this accurate because I know like there's more games now. Yeah, seventeen the pre- game uh, season. In the regular season, seventeen game season. So I'm predicting that the Ravens go. Let's say. I'm very optimistic. So let's say twelve and let's say twelve and five. 12 I was five. thinking around this. I was thinking around the same thing. That Dean guys take a huge jump up. Lamar got his money. So yep. look, he stays healthy. That's the key, though. That's the key. He's got to stay healthy. And you know, it's 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 funny because you know the media and how they always talk about how you know being a run first, you know, dual threat quarterback. You know, it's you're prone for for injuries and it's, it's not a sustainable way of playing football when he always gets hurt in the pocket. It's like, come on, man. Like, don't, don't down the man because, you know, he gets hurt in the pocket and they try to blame it on the run game. Like, come on. Like, why are they trying to slander? Cause look, I'm an Eagles fan, but I I love Lamar, man. So I'm with the absolute best from, he should have been had his money, but he got it. I'm glad the Eagles, you know, paid Jalen Hurts before him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, no, man, I'm just, glad. I'm glad that the you know the Ravens, you know, definitely paid Lamar. I would have been very upset, and I know a lot of Baltimore um, citizens and just like you know Ravens fans would have been highly, highly, very upset with the back of house if Lamar would have ended up leaving just because we didn't pay that man what he deserved. All right, well, I know you're a very busy guy, very busy schedule. You probably still got to cook. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got meal prepped, all that good stuff. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us on the Restricted Zone podcast. And you have yourself a great night and a great rest of your year, man. All right, you great too, rest of your It was a pleasure. Thank you. pleasure, honestly. Yes, have sir. A great one. You too, man. All right, so that was a one-on-one sit-down interview with Samuel, the Hitman Payne. I am Jonah Wooten. As always, of course, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. Oh, he would like 
us to maybe interview in the future. All right. This is a great interview. I would love to do more. So make sure you, you know, hit that comment and um, let us know many future episode topics, recommendations you want us to do. And um, we'll get on that. There's plenty more coming. As always, we got wrestling. We got WWE episodes going up in the future. NBA playoffs going into the conference finals. To go along with our Sixers therapy session in episode 106, we also gave you guys a brief uh, conference finals preview and predictions. So, you know, check us out. Make sure to hit that bell, too. Yeah, hit that bell and uh, be notified for whenever we upload a new video.